Welcome to the Goat Mentality Podcast. You're rocking it out with the hardest rappers, the hardest trappers of the 5501 for area code. We got our guest Jake Silberman in the house today. How you doing? Good. Jake? What's good? going on, Jake? How's it going? I'm just watching someone's life get ruined. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the car accidents are a nice touch. Yeah. I think we're just trying to keep people like engaged. Yeah. Uh, this is like, are you guys, so this, when it comes out, it's like, they'll see the car accident. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be like, you're like that, you're like here. those comics who use like big titty girls yep. to get more, you know that? Like <laughs> they leave it like, as a thumbnail. They'll put like big titty chicks and then they'll be like, hey, why don't you come see my date? Yeah. Or I've just seen straight up like one of those videos of the woman with the big tits where she's starting to lift her shirt yep. and just before the boobs flop out, it just cuts to them doing stand up. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. It's such a great art form we've, we've got. It truly is. Oh, yeah, man. I wake up every day in that closet and yeah. I go, I'm fucking blessed. <laughs> <laughs> great blessed. Oh, man. So you just got back from Fargo, right? Oh, yeah. Fargo, baby. Where were you at? I was at the cellar. Nice. Yeah, it was fun. I'd never been there before. I never performed in Fargo before. It's not nearly as like a hick town as I thought. No. Yeah. I, I you know, yeah. I thought Fargo was gonna be this little fucking dust bowl cowpoke town. But then they have like college there and yeah. shit. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, and it's actually like people are out and about. They mm -hmm. are. It was a bunch yeah. of students getting fucked up. Mm -hmm. and yeah, no, it was good. Uh yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, you know. Kind of one of those towns you're like this is good for a weekend yeah that's about all you and then you're like mm -hmm. ready to go did they had you in the condo right oh yeah nice yeah yeah me and mike early that's oh, nice. awesome. yeah that's... minnesota legend mike early mike early michael early i they used to put you up in this uh hotel called the fargo inn oh yeah and then the bar downstairs was called the box yeah. Oh, nice. And I remember my first time staying, and, and I went down to the box, and I got, I ordered a gin and tonic, mm -hmm. and I was like, I'm gonna gamble some of uh, my money. I sat down with the gin and tonic, put my money down, took a drink, all glass in the drink. It was just a bunch of shattered glass. In the <laughs> <gin> and <tonic. laughs> and I lost all my money. Oh hell yeah! I was like, oh, I guess I gotta drink it through a straw nice. so I don't get this glass in my mouth. Or Holy I'll just end shit! End it right now. Mm -hmm. hell yeah. Shattered glass. That's that's a fucking bar rescue moment right there. What the hell are you doing? He just sent you in his recon right there. Is that guy still around? Bar rescue? Bar, John bar rescue. Taffer? John oh, Taffer yeah. is absolutely still around. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's crazy how you can, like, just get money to open the worst business ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How is that possible? Like, how do you get all that money just to fuck it all up? Oh, are we just in Russia now? Where, what is it? Must that? be. But, I mean, like, with that, too, they do get a bunch of money, but... If you look up any of those restaurants or bars after the fact, closed. They're all closed. They're, yeah. yeah, John Taffer shuts them down. Exactly. Yeah. Why? Well, I don't think he shuts them down. I think he's like, I, I, I renovated your bar. Yeah. I put you in a, in a good spot. It's like, okay, so everybody was just like walking on eggshells because they have a guy behind them going, faster, faster. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're not always going to have that. Yeah, well, I think eventually it's like, yeah, dude, people just some people shouldn't be doing certain shit. Yeah. And no matter how much a guy fucking gets you right, you still suck. I feel like, though, that's just like any dude with massive calves and cargo shorts with a bad tan is, is meant to scream at waitresses. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, that's his birthright. Yeah. yeah. Um, he came in ready to fucking ruin a chick named Stacy's night. Mm-hmm. I've been thinking about uh, like like a sketch where it's just open mic rescue, <laughs> where, where where like we we bust in, we're like, you put up all your friends, they had to wait thirty minutes, and he's running his life. You know what the audience is thinking? You don't respect my time because he doesn't respect yours. <laughs> you know, like that, that's the kind of shit. It'd be so fucking good. Just breaking down like Sisyphus or something like that. <laughs> Real open mic rescue would be taking most of the lineup and taking them out back and shooting them in the head. <laughs> I I that's, would agree like, with that's, that. That's like the that's the uh, like Pornhub version of it, where or like the dark web version, where you just are like, "There's no reason you need to be doing this." <laughs> Take them yeah. out, John Taffert. <laughs> the the hobbyists are the people who are like just let him enjoy it it's like you don't realize what yeah. you're doing right now i'm living in a fucking closet for this dream bitch yeah it's like yeah straight up but no I, like a dude who's like 
Yeah, just really like going out there talking about my kids, and it's like, <laughs> I want to rip your fucking head off. <laughs> I, I have a good job. I work in an office, and then all of his coworkers will come out and watch it. Yeah. That's uh, all he's good for, bringing mm-hmm. an audience. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, hoping this one would blow up. There's not a whole lot of explosions. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. That one was like a gas tank one. Yeah, these are all like foreign countries. Yeah, a, a lot of them are. I think like the, the, the best ones can be in like North Carolina or like the South. Yeah. Oh, right? yeah. Because it's either they're pulling over, somebody's getting out of their car with a gun. Oh, Or okay. it's just like a brutal wreck. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I remember watching these at Max's house when we, when we both lived there and just getting high and then like I'd be laying on the couch and be like, I'm going to get in an accident. I'm going to get in. It would make me tweak so bad watching this. But. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. You just realize that there's just the world is just filled with fucking morons. Yeah. Yeah. And there's like nothing you can do. Some no. of these are not preventable. No. 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 Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of nice to see international ones because you just realize the entire globe is populated by yeah. fucking morons. Yeah, like he's gonna probably pass. He's like, Let him me here. try to yeah. pass up. Oh, yep. Well, at least one he just did it to himself. And that's always the craziest one is like if you were to to wipe out like that had video of it of of just you being an asshole, why would you send it to somebody? He's like, I gotta go viral, bro. <laughs> I gotta submit this. This yeah. is America for sure. I don't. No, think so. it's not. Damn. No. Yeah. No, these are just you know third world countries that we used to own. You <laughs> drive or used to drive. A lot. Did yeah, ever... dude, I know. I, I didn't get into any accidents, thank God. But yeah, you see a lot of dumbasses. Yeah, you, I mean, I was thinking, like, when we were driving to Fargo, and it was like four hours, mm-hmm. and I was like, dude, I, this was this is a light day. Yeah. Four hours, yeah. Four yeah, hours? That's yeah, not bad at all. You know, I would do, like, sometimes, you know, you would do a gig and then drive four or five hours, then sleep, then get up and do the rest of the drive the next day. Mm-hmm. I only had to do that. Did you ever do Ron Herring gigs? No, I never did. I never huh. signed up for the old Ron gigs. Man, you work with him until he fires you. Yeah. Pretty much. Did, yeah. Did you guys see the, the, the post he just posted out? Mm-mm. It had a sick line at the end of it. It was, it was talking about how all these comedians think, think it's, it's the, they're, the reason they blew up is because of, because of their jokes. And it's like, no, I built them. Uh, but he had this sick ass <laughs> line at the end of it. What the fuck? He said, "Who blown up off Ron Herring gigs?" Well, he he's saying that I'm the X factor and you're the benefactor. We are not the same. Oh shit! He said, "He's saying like that hell gig you did in Northern Minnesota." Yeah, <laughs> that was me. Yeah, I just. Does he realize his gigs are rough, or is he like, what is his like? I don't viewpoint think he gives a it, fuck. But does he understand? Does he, what's his viewpoint on his own? The stuff that he's doing. I genuinely think it's like a money laundering scheme. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because he's this Italian guy on Long Island that you never get to see, and he only communicates with you through three of his different Facebooks with all different names. Oh, oh, yeah. This yeah. sounds criminal for and sure. And then he's setting up these gigs all over the country where you get three hundred dollars total for you and the opener that you got to split. <laughs> Wait, and no gas money? There's no gas money, no. How are th- oh, so how is this even worth it? It's pretty, it's not. It's not. <laughs> I think the only way that you can make it worth it is if you sell merch. Okay. And then you can do okay. And then oh. you bring, or you bring like a tip bucket. Mm-hmm. Oh. And I've done all right with the tip bucket okay. before. Yeah, I feel like so. every time we've done a Ron gig, there's been a tip bucket and merch out. Yeah. Damn, yeah, that's tough. Three hundred dollars. Yeah, I remember <laughs> these guys in like the Portland scene, you know, who were really bad comedians. Mm-hmm. They were not good, and no, they wouldn't even really get booked in Portland. Like they were just like we'd be like, oh no, these guys suck. Mm-hmm. But they would always be like, oh yeah, man, I'm doing the road. And I was like, who's booking you? And then I was like, oh okay, yeah, this guy don't give a fuck about comedy. And it was Ron. It was Ron, yeah. It's crazy yes. the reach he has. Oh, dude, he yeah. has, like, it's cross-country. He's uh, everywhere. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's cross-country. Yeah, yeah, no, these guys are doing, like, rural Oregon and Idaho gigs, and I'd be like, you guys don't have 10 minutes that I would sit through, and then they're like, oh, I'm doing an hour. I'm just like, oh, okay, well, this this is a joke of a... What company. the fuck? Yeah. yeah, he was headlining these guys who were not, 
really, truly, like people were like, oh, they're the, some of the worst comics in the scene. We wouldn't even book them. <laughs> on, we wouldn't even book them on the showcases. And Damn. they would be like, yeah, well, I'm going to do the road this weekend. And I was just like, dude, who, what, who is doing this to, to audiences? Yeah, and then I found out it was all Ron gigs. Yeah, yeah. Heading over to the Dragonfly Winery to make three hundred dollars <laughs> to yeah. split. Well, and it was like they had to like bring the PA or have yes. their own PA, mm-hmm. yeah. and yeah, like they're sleeping in their car sometimes, yep. <laughs> yeah. and you're just like, I mean, I guess it's like you know when you're that new, it's like the time is beneficial, but yeah. it is funny to think that like a man's like company is based on like. Hey, I found some of the worst comedians around to like <laughs> ruin an audience's night, and then I'll refuse to pay them. Oh, does yeah. he? Does he steal? Oh, he will refuse oh really? To pay you? Yes. Damn. I've had many an argument with him. In wait, like so? What's what's he saying? Uh, he's just like you didn't do your time, and it's like how do you know? He'll just straight up be like you didn't do enough time. Wait, one what? time the <laughs> gig I did with Elliot, yeah. He claimed that we didn't do enough time and then was just outright like, I'm not going to pay you. And the bar owner emailed him while we were there and was like, hey, if you don't pay these guys, we're not working with you again. And, and good that, for them. I mean, yeah. Good for them. But like, holy shit. And I remember, too. I'm not, oh, so that's that's how he makes money. He just probably steals from comedians. Oh, definitely. Yes. Definitely. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he's charging $20 on Eventbrite that he keeps. Holy shit. Oh, so the bar's not? taking any of this money either Mm-mm. what is it in there for these bars drink sales, sales. Sell drinks. yeah jesus christ yeah the um, yeah the one thing i remember you aiden telling me about like the first time he, you ever brought up ron heron is you're like he's a brick wall in your road in comedy you have to run through him at some point <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i've never done any of the gigs and like now at this point I don't feel like I really need to. No. I guess if I was like, yo, dude, I'm about to lose my house or something and I had to take any gig possible, right. sure. But like, yeah, I there's also guys now who are basically doing the Ron model, but actually like doing it better in pain. Sure. Like there's these guys next, next stop. stop. Next stop. I was They're everywhere say. now. And they literally are just doing that. They're just finding small town breweries and wine and wineries and they're doing that. But it's like, you know, they're like actual they're comedians, first of yeah. all. So they don't want to like ruin their rep. So they are paying. They have it like set up better and stuff. So yeah, yeah I would just work with those guys. I would never fucking oh, work absolutely. with Ron. Yeah. Yeah. No, Ron is, uh, I've only ever gone to him when I was desperate. <laughs> and in the beginning, because I was like you said, yeah. he just books anybody. Yeah. Yeah. That's the yeah. thing is it's like, yeah, he doesn't seem to really have a standard. Mm-mm, none at all. He's just like, oh, are you willing to drive four hours for nothing? Sure, I'll book you. There's several people I'm sure in these rural towns in Kansas, the first run I did, that's like, Aiden McCluskey fucking sucks at comedy. They probably don't even remember your name. Unless if, you like got a girl pregnant there or something. I don't think I did. <laughs> There's Wait, a little so young Aiden out there. They leave reviews or what? Well, yeah, they send Ron reviews mm. and like review his comedy stuff, but he's constantly, he has a vendetta for comics that are working for him and driving extreme distances. Mm. And he'll just be like, actually, I thought about it. Gigs, not yours anymore. I'll find someone to fill it. And you're like 10 hours. Wait, yeah. what? Yeah. And then you'd have to just show up and do the gig before whoever else was going to come. Holy oh shit. my god god fuck this guy and his fucking ass the, dude. um what was the one run he he asked you to do it was like montana all the dude, way out to Ma- massachusetts it was night. dude it was like <laughs> he would send you these runs that are it's like dude this is like geolo- like geographically impossible yeah, yeah. <laughs> he sent me one that was like i needed to be in wyoming and then friday night be in new england and then after new england be in Wyoming Saturday night. <laughs> He's like, kid, you got to do this to, yeah. to earn your stripes in the Ron empire. <laughs> and I just was like, I can't do that. And he just said, pussy. <laughs> 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 All right. I'm back on team Ron now. Yeah. yeah. I'm back on team Ron. Well, fucking a dude. <laughs> he just calls you. He's like, you little bitch. Pussy. <laughs> You don't want to drive 3,200 miles in 24 hours, you little bitch. That was, 
Guess you don't want to make it. Guess you don't want to. <laughs> guess you don't realize you don't you're working. Drive, you don't. You're not working. You don't realize you're working with the X Factor yep. right now. <laughs> you're just the benefactor, Aiden. <laughs> you're just the benefactor. This fucking kid you're don't have the stones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, you don't want to lose four hundred dollars doing my run, Aiden? You little bitch, <laughs> dude. It wasn't like time. wise Even if I no, flew, yeah. it yeah. wouldn't yeah. be possible yeah. to yeah. make that happen. God damn, yeah. Because how, like, how far of a drive is Wyoming to New England? That's oh. gotta be crazy, bro, dude. That's basically Over twenty four like, hours. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a fucking yeah. I mean, like from from denver to new york is a few days yeah wyoming is basically north so you're basically like leaving from denver up yeah without sleeping maybe you could do it in like 20 hours maybe but yeah it's that it's, would be so fucking brutal no these and then to go back to be yes. like oh no but we have a gig for you back here you just need to do uh you just have to do northern vermont first <laughs> yeah. yes four days of like no sleep yeah would be insane. To to lose four hundred dollars. So, yeah. To yeah. lose four hundred dollars. Uh, God damn! I think a lot of that shit is going away though because yes. of the internet. Yeah. Like people are just are realizing, talking. like, yeah. nah, fuck this. This guy doesn't pay, or this guy. Does. There was these old school runs. This guy named Dave Tribble. One day, three hours. One day, three hours. Yeah. Okay, so like twenty, twenty five, twenty eight hours, and then your. That's no no sleep. No sleep. No sleep. No you, stop. Don't, you don't sleep ever yeah. in that three yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking A, dude. There was this guy, Dave Tribble, who would do his his were kind I've of, heard that name. He mm-hmm. doesn't do it anymore. Uh, I think he just got old and retired. But there was a lot of these guys who would like be like regional bookers, you know? That was like their thing. It was like mm-hmm. that's how they made their money. They had all these rooms. So he would, I knew this was kind of when I was starting comedy though. So you heard about them, but like it would be, yeah, you'd leave from Portland. You'd have to do fucking, <laughs> you'd have to do Eastern Montana. <laughs> one night. And then, yeah, he's like, got you back down in fucking Nevada. The you know? <laughs> Holy shit. And these guys would take the gigs because that was like the work back then, you know, that wow. was like the thing. But yeah, you would be like, all right, I'm the feature. So I have to pick up the headliner somewhere do you know whatever 15 minutes for no money drive the head you know and the the one time i was going to work with him he he was booking a he was booking a club he booked a few small clubs too and he called me he was like very old school he called and was like hey i uh i hear you can do 30 minutes do you want to feature you know i was like sure <laughs> you know <laughs> he set up the date and then I kept, and then the dates were getting closer. And I was like, I hadn't heard any like hotel, you know, cause this was like, you get a hotel and I would, I was kept emailing him and texting him. I was like, Hey man, I just want to like confirm. And then the day came and I didn't get anything. So I was like, well, I'm not going to drive six hours. And I saw they just posted. It was a different headline or a different feature. He just completely, <laughs> he completely forgotten. And he did that to a bunch of our friends. And then like shortly thereafter, it was like, yeah, Dave is retiring. He's losing his mind. Like he was like going with, he had like dementia or some I shit. I was going to say a booker with dementia is hilarious. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I think he just like, he just aged out of being able to remember dates names and times <laughs> so he's like oh i can't do this fucking job anymore someone like that getting dementia people would be like people would talk and be like we can't do this but yeah. imagine if like joe rogan now got dementia at his club yeah. people would be like you're so right joe yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's stumbling around in the green room and it's they're all like all yakov smirnoff baby. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yakov is the only comedian who's working the Rogan Club. Just, just a Joe Rogan podcast where he's pointing at Jamie. Who is that guy? Get him out of here. What's he doing? Jamie, can you pull his name up? <laughs> Jamie, look this up. Why can't I remember my own daughter's name? <laughs> oh, Jamie, who am I? Yeah. So I woke up in the middle of the night and I've got my pants around my ankles and I'm seeing the shadow <laughs> figure. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Do you, it was preposterous. <laughs> have you been down there? Yeah. You did the club? I just did the open mic. Oh, okay. How was it? The open mic was, I don't know if I was there on a weird night. It was just mm-hmm. kind of underwhelming. Yeah. It reminded me of like Acme open mic. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It, 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 every, but everybody's doing three minutes. Sure. And not to say Acme's open mic is like underwhelming by any yeah. means, but it had like the same feel and I was doing my best material yeah. Yeah. so it felt weird yeah. to like be up there you know 
Like you're like this is Aiden's shot. Yeah, that's I was Aiden's like I guess I have to do now, baby. the best stuff I have. Aiden's and then I left and it. I was like I don't know if that you're was like worth I guess it. I'm not going to be on the Rogan show today. Mhm. Yeah, but, when I was down there in 2021, this was like pre his club, it was yeah. just like so I was just like damn dude, these dudes are thirsty for his dick. Oh, were oh, really? they there waiting for him to get Dude, there? Dude, so many people were already, because it was the pandemic, so a lot of them had moved because there wasn't comedy happening anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So they moved to Austin because shows were still happening because it was Texas. And, like, they were just, like, I was, I did some shows and I, I went to a few open mics to kind of, like, check it out, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, dude, it was, like, it would be, like, 35 white dudes who were like between 23 and 28 and it was just like yeah. the same material over and over yes. again no it's that times yeah five. yeah yeah it was just like and it, you could tell that they all had moved there and they were just like joe rogan's opening a club yeah i'm gonna fucking i'm gonna fucking be in joe rogan like it was just like they had this dream of like him being at a shitty bar open mic and be like oh dude yeah. i just i found the new chris you know yeah. yes i found the new guy and, you know, I'm sure a lot of those guys are still doing the same shit. Well, you also told me when you were down there, like, you've seen the most amount of people sleeping in their cars yes. in one area. Yeah, there are so many. Oh, I'm sure the van life thing there, the car life thing there has got to be crazy. So many comics are living in their car down there and they're like genuinely miserable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, because I think you get it's like. It's kind of like Hollywood in a way. It's like, you're going to come here, kid, and your dreams are going to happen. And it's like, well, yeah, not everybody can be a Kill Tony right. Wonka ticket, ticket guy yeah. or whatever the fuck it is. You know, like a lot of them are just going to be like, oh, I got on Kill Tony once and nothing happened. And now I'm just an open micer. Right. Yeah. And they've moved. They moved yeah. and they thought this was going to be their big thing. Yeah. And it's like completely saturated with guys who are just like them. That's That would be my fear is just like, yeah, I don't There's think it's the move. versions of me in one place. It's pretty much what it is. Yeah, so. I mean, yeah. especially if you're trying to be in the like kill Tony sphere, the right. Joe Rogan sphere, you all kind of have to you you know start like, oh, I have to have some crazy story, you know, because that's what's going to get me viral. And you're not even doing like comedy anymore; right. you're just being like a carnival act. And it's also like stuff like kill Tony. If that was like your kind of claim to fame, I don't know if that would be really what I would want. You know what I mean? Just doing I think like, it helps you for a while. I don't know if it's like the thing that sticks around forever. Right. But yeah, I don't think it's sustainable. Yeah. I mean, he just, he just sold out Madison Square Garden for two nights. That's Jesus crazy. Christ. Kill Tony did, yeah. Yeah. But like, I went there and I did a show and I was just like, kind of like, whatever. I just, I, I was on with some Austin comics and I just started my set being like, I'm just here to suck Joe Rogan's dick. And I kept saying it and like people were laughing, but there was this one Austin comic who like was like not happy about it. Cause I think he was there to be like, Hey man, like you're making fun of what I'm here for. Yeah. Like he didn't want to admit that, but I was like, dude, I'm just here to suck Joe. Oh, dude, give me Joe Rogan's dick. I'll suck it right yeah. now. Yeah. And I did like my first few minutes of my set and I could just see him being like, that's not really that funny. <laughs> you know? And I could see, Cause he was like a guy who like the whole, his whole vibe was like, Hey man, I love Joe Rogan. And I don't even really give a shit about Joe Rogan, but it's lame to be about a guy. Right. One like, guy. One yeah. guy. That's like your whole thing. Like that's just lame to be about, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, what's your drive to be a comedian? Joe Rogan. Like that's yeah. 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 Like it's, it's just, just kind of like, all right, dude, this is your whole thing. And yeah. also you're a fucking comic in Austin. You should be able to like joke about this shit. Right. Yeah. Like I, it just felt like it was like, hey, don't make fun of daddy. Yeah. It's that's like really daddy, the vibe. Daddy's, down there. Like, daddy's like gonna help all of us. Don't make fun of him. And it's like he's not though. He can't. Even if he wanted, he can't. There's not yeah. enough spots at a comedy club to help him. And no, I, there's so many. It's like the size of Minneapolis, but right. if you multiplied the comics by 10. Yeah. Really? Yes, there's so many comedians down there. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, It's the same thing with, with people that like moved to New York. They're like, When they're about to go there, they're like, it's going to be so sick. And then you talk to them like three months later, they're like, yeah, this just fucking sucks. I wish I stayed. Yeah, I'm I'm talking to you a year and a half later and it still sucks. Yeah. It hasn't got but when I went to New York with Trey, everybody was like, Yeah, the first year sucks. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, I think it depends. I think some people's first year sucks and then some people's year eight still sucks. Yeah. Oh. I mean, and then I've seen some people 
get within a few months, it's it rules. Really? For them. Oh yeah. I've I've known a couple comics now who move there and it's like, oh, you just are whatever. You have something that bookers like and it's just like you're yeah. in. And yeah. I mean I've seen people move there a few months in and it's like, oh, you're past at four clubs that comics who've been here for five, six years are not at any of them. Right. Damn. So it's like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean it definitely depends on the person. The other thing I hear about New York is that it's like same amount of like like comedians that you would that you would watch in Minneapolis, but mm. then just like multiply the crazy people by like a hundred. There are a lot. I yeah. did notice a lot of delusional people. A lot people. of delusion there. But I mean, that's anything, any energy source that is like a, like a, you know, people want to be a part of. There's going to, yeah. the crazies are definitely going to show up because they also believe that they should be a part of it. For sure. They have no like self-awareness. You're like, dude, you're the worst comic I've ever seen. <laughs> but what are you doing here? What are you, what are you doing in comedy? Let alone, what are you doing in New York? Yeah. I, the thing about the crazies in New York that I felt was like the crazies here are fun. Yes. They're like genuinely mentally ill, like people who have no delusion that they're going to be professional right. comedians. They just love the mics. Yeah. But the delusional comedians and crazy comedians in New York, it's like, well, if I just do this for long enough and nothing happens, yeah. that's me. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know that's what I mean? Who I am. Like it's more soul sucking to mm -hmm. see those crazy people. Yeah. Yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird city because you're just like, what do you do during the day? I'm always wanting to like follow them around. I'm like, what's your days like here? Because you're just, you're just bombing at these open mics, but yeah. you must have a job. So you're just like a guy who goes to work, pays really expensive rent, and then goes eat shit every night. Oh. That would be that like would that's be your whole so life. devastating. That'd be it's so just, devastating. It's wild. But that's the problem when you get into comedy. They're like, yeah, you're gonna suck in the beginning. Yeah. But then you get better. And then some people are like, Yeah, I'm just working. And it's like you're two and a half years in. Yeah. You haven't clicked anything yet. Right, yeah. Yeah, no, some of it is just, like, sad people, and you're just like, this is all they have. Mm -hmm. This is all you fucking have. Those are the scariest ones, yeah. though. Yeah. <laughs> Those ones yeah. are the scariest ones. They got ones. nothing to lose. God, yeah. Are you, like, how many mics in New York do you have to pay for? Almost all of them. Really? Yeah. Still? I mean, there's maybe... I think there's a couple free ones that I know about, but yeah, most of it is you got to buy, either got to pay them a couple bucks or you got to buy a drink, which I mean, in New York though, I, I know, I know people shit on it, but it's like, dude, rent is so crazy for people and businesses yeah. that there's just no way a business could let 30 people in who don't buy anything. Like you have to, yeah. like, it's just the, the, nobody would do an open mic then. If yep. there was a, if there, if comics only would be like, it has to be free or I won't go. It's like, well then I'm just, why would a business do sure. that? And Cause it's just like, they can't just have people like, 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 dude, we, we have to make money all the time or else we're going to go out of business. Yeah. So I, I don't even really hate it. I mean, it sucks because then just trying to get better cost whereas here, you know, any other small town, you can just be like, oh yeah, it's all free. Mm -hmm. But I kind of, in New York, it's just too crazy to be expect a business to be like, yeah, come on in, all these strangers, and just like let me give you free water, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. It's just like, like it just doesn't your fucking phone. work. Yeah. Um. What? Are, like, what's your like genuine opinion of New York? You say you hate it, but like, I just like I just think that you you have it's like it it kicks you in your nuts all the time, <laughs> and then and you're just like, <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm gonna be here for a while. Oh. I don't know. I mean, when when you say it kicks you in the in the nuts, are you saying just like on a day to day scale, or just like comedy wise, or both? I feel like I get you. I've got used to the city pretty easily. Yeah. The city is just like yes, I understand. I mean, dude, we fucking though. It, it's so funny. I ride the subway every day in New York, and like people, like you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, just here and anywhere else, people when they I'm they're like, oh, New York City, you ride the subway. And it's like, dude, I took the light rail from the Twins game downtown last night to uh, <laughs> yeah. we parked our we parked our car on like the 38th Ave stop. Yeah, yeah. Like, kind of close to like South where I went to high school. And dude, the amount I mean, it was a cartoon level of like whole. How can they fit this many psychos on a train? Yes. <laughs> yeah. The light rail yeah. is constant bullshit. It is nuts how many like I was just like, oh shit, like this is like 
New York, it's like, yeah, you might have one guy and then you can just get up and yeah. like leave. Yeah. And, but there's so many normal people on it that you're like, they kind of like, if a dude is doing some weird shit, you at least have a few normal people to like check in with and be like, what do we feel about this guy? <laughs> yeah. you know? Dude, on the light rail, it was like bedlam on there, dude. Yeah. It, was, <laughs> it was like, I couldn't, I was like, I mean, it wasn't, I wasn't like laughing in the moment because I was like, all right, I have to check on this guy with a knife. Yep. He was like, this guy opened a knife and was scraping mud off his backpack. Nice. Whoa. And I was like, okay, so I know he has a knife. There was these dudes who immediately got on and like, you, you know, they have like face tattoos and neck tattoos. And then all of a sudden they like put their jackets in their backpack, put their hoods up, put, pull the string. So I'm like, okay, so like, are you guys getting ready to fight somebody? Like, it was just like why are you covering everything right. identifiable about you all of a sudden? And then they start throwing like signs to this other guy across the fucking train. And he starts coming down and they have to start getting this argument about a girl where you're like, okay, oh, what right. the fuck? So we move. We're just like, yeah, fuck this. And they get out. And I don't know if they start fighting. There's a guy who's smoking meth. I was going to say, yeah. there's a lot of Drug like pill smokers. Yeah, crack yeah smoke. they, uh, he had some foil. So he yeah. was smoking. Um, there was, you know, just, and then there's just the other dudes who are like the, you know, like now it's like a style for like young guys to have full ski masks. The shysties. Yeah. yeah. yeah the shysties. I and hate you're just them like, things. I just like, you know, I don't know like what that is, but it's like, okay, like the only thing I can think of is you want people to be kind of nervous around you. Like, I don't yeah. really even get the vibe. No. What is the vibe that you're trying to parlay to the world here? Because. No, the shysties are a different level of unease. Mm. When I see them, I'm like, what are you Dude, this doing? this is literally like what terrorists look like in 80s action movies. Yes. Like, oh, you can't, you can only see their eyes. They like take over a boat or some shit yeah. or a fucking plane. <laughs> yeah. Like, yep. what the fuck is this? They got the Giotti John and Drip. Yeah, like, <laughs> I just don't understand, like, I mean, you don't want to make it like a race or a class thing, but you're like, you know, like, they're like, like, I feel like guys like that sometimes are like, well, people just don't understand me. It's like, well, dude, you look like you're going to rob a bank. Yeah. yeah. So, like, what do you yeah. want people to understand about you? Because yeah. any person is like, I'd like to see your face, yeah. I think. Yes. I think I'd like to know what your face looks like. Even if they threw on a COVID mask, I would be 50% less worried around them. Yeah. You know? It's but just it's wild just to be like, mask. okay, it's a full ski mask, yeah. bro. Because with a COVID mask, you're like, I know his vulnerability. I know how to take him out. Just yeah. cough in his mouth as he yeah. gets close, you know? It's very weird to be around and then just to be like, yeah, this is totally normal and I shouldn't feel any type of way about this. No. Yeah. I yeah. shouldn't feel any type of way about a guy who I can't, I can only see his eyes. Right. And he's, they're constantly darting around. Yeah. And they're always fiddling in their pocket. It's Dude, like, what are you was doing? Like digging in his like belt line. It's like, yes. do you have a gun? <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, what am I supposed yeah. to be like? So yeah, but it was so funny because like I'm people are always like, oh my god, New York is it dangerous? I'm like, apparently not as bad as the Minneapolis light rail. Yeah. Like, well, that's the thing is just I feel like in New York it's so built into the culture there where the light rail is like, no one really, really uses it here because nobody's has, on the street except homeless people. So like, yes. oh, it's a way to get around. <laughs> yeah. well, and everybody has cars here. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Everybody has cars, so you're like, well, I'll just drive. I'm not going to take this shit. Yeah. So the people who don't have cars, you're like, oh, fuck. Dude, I was sitting at a coffee shop yesterday, and there was uh, a bus stop across the street, and there were two Native guys. Yep. They seemed to be friends. Yep. And the one was on bullshit. He had on, like, a ski mask, but it was pulled down, like, around his neck. Yep. And then this dude comes over. He's got a backpack. There's a girl hanging out. And he starts talking to the, the dude with the backpack. And then it seems like they're getting along. Like he offers a fist bump to the guy. Doesn't take it. The guy, as the bus is pulling up, takes like a smart water bottle like this and boom, <laughs> hits him and then just starts spraying him with water. Oh. And people are getting off the bus and he's trying to fight like three <laughs> different people. <laughs> this old black guy walks off the bus and he goes, demons follow me everywhere. I'm a bus his eye socket. Wind <laughs> up in jail again. And... Then the bus door closes, the other guy gets on, another bus pulls up, and he starts getting on, the, and the, a dude that's not getting off at that yeah. stop starts coming out and kicking <laughs> at him, <laughs> and that bus pulls away, and then he's just standing there, and he turns to his friend, and he goes, 
I'm gonna get the strap and fuck you up. Oh, and then shit. his friend starts pushing him away and they start swinging on each other. And the one guy starts walking across the street. And I'm like, now he's gonna try and fight me. He just tried to fight like four or five unrelated people. Yeah. yeah. And he just kept walking and pacing up and down the street and he was reaching his waistband. And I was like, this is gonna get fucking yeah. bad. This is that spy house on Nicolette. Oh, oh really? really? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, dude, being a fucking like transit driver in this day and age, mm. I, I don't know why anybody yeah. would sign up for this job. And no. also, like, people are like, oh, or because me personally, I have, I don't like driving around metro buses because they're just gonna pull out out of nowhere. Yes, even even if you're like halfway past them, like <laughs> fuck you, yeah. pull out right in front. Yeah, they don't like, play. They I get do pissed play. off about that, but then it, but then it is like. Think about who they're with right now. Like oh, dude, they're, they're the most well behaved. They're yeah. literally, it's like Arkham, Arkham Asylum on their job every yeah. day. <laughs> yeah. They have to drive Arkham around and they're like, all right, well, <laughs> I don't want to die today. Killer Croc getting on the bus. Yeah. I feel like it's got to be a worse job than being a cop because like yeah. at least 100%. a cop, you're like, yo, I get to dictate some of this energy and right. I have a gun. Like mm-hmm. if you're yeah. just a fucking MTA driver, you're like, oh, I'm fucking toast. You're not even in a good position to defend yourself yeah. because you're like, you're like facing this, like your side of your face is this way. So you're you just are like in. literally like <laughs> yeah. punch the most punchable yep. person Absolutely. on the bus. And also it's like you're, you're driving around people that already don't go around with societal norms. And the only defense is you have a line where you're yeah. like, you can't stand in front of it. You know, yeah. like that's the only thing keeping you from getting punched. I will say it's always weird once in a blue moon when you get on a bus. Like obviously in New York, this doesn't that's happen as much because like the drivers truly generally don't give a fuck. But you know, yeah. sometimes you get a bus and a homeless guy or some like weirdos like doesn't pay and then the guy the bus driver's like hey man i'm like why are you risking your life right. for 250 for the city yeah it's not even your money pick your battles hey dude we're not moving this bus until you pay it's like dude he's gonna kill us all right. just get the fuck on yeah dude i yeah. i don't know if you could pay me to ride public transit in minneapolis i remember we wanted to do that one or we yes. kind of did that one thing with mall of america yeah. but your idea was that we take public transit yeah. there and film the entire time yes we would have been stabbed and our phones taken from us immediately yes. dude. <laughs> yeah it's uh yeah has the city got like i mean you know i grew up here but i yeah. haven't really lived here in like 11 or 12 years true has the city just like fallen, <laughs> fallen well, way hard dude, off? So yesterday, I mean, obviously, like the 2020 shit and the George Floyd shit, like you know, kind yeah. of whatever. But like, is it just way worse than I remember? So yesterday, I was at the same coffee shop. Yep. So to you give a little get a new coffee shop, yeah. Buddy. <laughs> to give <laughs> a little a backstory, co- the fucking there's these group of dudes that drive two different vehicles, yeah, and they've just been going around robbing college girls at the u of m campus i heard about that yeah yeah and they haven't caught them yet and i was sitting at the like, coffee shop pull up on a girl pull up and just start like broad daylight there like was right that now. video oh, you shit. showed me yeah where, the, where a bunch of dudes pull up in a van and just rip this girl's bag straight out of her hands and like are kicking her on the ground yeah oh fuck really yeah. they're kicking and, women yeah oh yeah and they were whipping around here it's the same cars i saw in the video they were whipping around there yesterday doing burnouts and stuff they were hanging out the window they had ski masks on and they were flashing signs at people as they were driving around. It's like, how have we not caught these guys yet? This yeah. is the most egregious thing I've ever seen. And there's Dude. also, I remember when, once again, when we lived at Max's place, like I, I would have the day off, like just in the middle of the week. And people would be coming down like probably 60, 70 miles an hour, hanging out the side. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just gooning, dude. Exactly. Mm-hmm. exactly. Some of it is like kind of fun. You're like, oh man, these guys are fucking just doing what they want. Yeah. But then it's like, oh, they're just like robbing women. Like, right. what the fuck? Yeah. They stole just that Just goon Kia. out and like, I don't know, rob a liquor store or something right. that's like, you know. Yeah, that makes sense to rob. Not a college student yeah. at yeah. 323 in the afternoon. Yeah, that's sad. Damn. So the city just sucks now, huh? It, I, I would say, I mean, like I grew up in the suburbs, so it wasn't necessary. Like I, I, I've never truly been like in the city, in the city. Oh, okay. It doesn't seem like horrible when you're, when you're living there, but there are events that happen where you're like, oh, I see where this is yeah. gone downhill. Uh, well, because the police have that non-pursuit. Thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're just like, yeah, we're not getting. Yeah, so like you can do something insane in front of a cop, mm-hmm. and only their supervisor, like if you did that in front of a sergeant, he could elect to pursue you. Mm-hmm. But the average like street patrol cop, there's like a non-pursuit thing. 
Oh, you have damn. to get like clearance to pursue the vehicle. Oh shit! So like you could blow a red light in front of a cop, and he's gonna like radio. Damn! And be and like, they, can they I just, follow they this? Just guy? Tell the populace that. Yeah. Well, I mean, so everybody it's, knows. It's yeah. general knowledge. I everybody mean, I just know. Yeah. Well, like you were talking since the George Floyd shit. Like everything is kind of gone like that. Have you ever? Have you I mean, should, yeah. I haven't lived here though, so right. that's the thing. Is it's like I just come back for like these short visits, and I'm just like generally either at the cl- one of the comedy clubs or at like my folks' house. So I'm not yeah. really like out. Like that was like you can go to the Twins game last night, and coming back, I was like, damn. I guess I haven't been in like some of the like the old neighborhood, you know, because I went to South, so I was around that neighborhood, and you'd see like kind of some stuff when you went to school there, but you're also like a student. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I just it was, like, was kind of like eye opening. I was like, God, fucking damn, dude. Yeah. This shit. I mean, it was yeah. like. It was just like, has it always been? Th- I mean, I've li- like I said, I've lived here my whole life. I was like, has it always been this way? And I just never was around this. But I feel like it has gotten wilder. Yeah. Oh, it definitely yeah. Yeah. has. Yeah. It definitely has. Oh, yeah. The cops will just drive by active crime. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm sure it's them making a point of like, hmm, you didn't want us, so yeah. we won't do anything. Oh, then. sure. I mean, you yeah. know, yeah. But it's like majority of the people want you to do something now right we we gotta stop this yeah they're like yeah uh here's some more funding how about that yeah that's so I, uh, crazy like if if there was like an assault like like that like if somebody pulled up on a, on like a, a college girls ripped off everything out of her <laughs> yeah. possession yeah. and a cop was right there you're telling me he can't like go he no, would he no would. he would do something then oh, okay. i mean but i'm saying like if you do something, you're driving in front of a cop. Just minor things. Yeah. Like traffic stuff. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. But that doesn't apply to, like, state troopers. Yeah. See, if you're, like, high or drunk driving around, don't do it on the highway. But yeah. But do it in the city. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Uh, I also like <laughs> that you were... so crazy that you can just drunk drive and they have to call somebody. You think I'd be like, can we get this guy? You're probably five minutes down the road If already. you, like nail the car in front of them they would pull you over but like if you're swerving they're probably not going to do anything i think a lot of towns have this now though like cops are just like yeah we're not we're not trying to do shit unless we like can guarantee we're not going to get in trouble yeah right like i i've saw like other towns are doing that now so i guess we'll see how it goes i don't know yeah i already don't like the method no, I'm not either. a not a fan. We just experienced it when my when my headphones yeah. and my Steam Deck were ripped out of my car. <laughs> yeah. and <laughs> and all, they were, they called me and they were like, "All we can do is knock on the door, hope we get an answer." <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? So like we I parked right by the Twin Stadium. I was at a mic. Yeah, and I I come back. I paid fifteen dollars for parking because I couldn't find street parking, and I was so like, it was in a lot. It was yes. in a lot. I had locked my car. Yeah. We get to, we, we, we finish up at the mic. We get back there. My headphones, my steam deck are in the car. Um, What's a steam deck? It's like a, like a little, you, you know, like a switch. Yeah. It's like that, but you can play like PC games. Oh, on okay. It. All right. Um, and so I get back and it's all gone and I start screaming at the top busted of my out. fucking life. It's not busted out. Just, I think they Jimmy just the passenger side door. Oh, okay. Um, so, but they, they just fucking took everything from me. I tracked my headphones to the house, 3209 Longfellow Avenue. Um, and fans of the pod, <laughs> yeah, track who don't them have down. much to live for, you know what to do. <laughs> exactly right. Um, but yeah, so, so I get there, and, or I like, we, they said once they stop, park three to four blocks down the road, and then call us, and then we can do something. And then I get, get a call from a guy, he's like, Hey, is this Ollie? And I'm like, no, it's Elliot. And he's like, oh, so it seems like they stole your headphones and whatever shit else. Is this a cop talking to you? A cop talking to me. Uh, He called me up on the phone. And he was like, well, I'll just tell you what I can do. I can knock on the door. Do you want me to do that? And I'm like, yes, knock on the door. And um, like he he goes there. I see him drive by I because I thought he was going to meet up with us first. And he was going to like look at what I had. Yeah. yeah. Um, But he just drives by, calls me again saying, I'm going to knock on the door now. Calls me literally 30 seconds later saying, no answer, go home, have a better night. Damn. Yeah. Well, sorry, bud. No, I mean, yeah. Sorry but. you can't play your little games anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's felony theft, though. That was $1,000. Oh, no, stuff. I mean, you're in the right, but the <laughs> cops are, I mean, the property thing, I don't know how much that's changed because I don't feel like they've ever been able to do shit about yeah. that. 
Because they're always just kind of like, yeah. Yeah. That's like, I feel like that's been cops' attitudes for decades. Like, yeah, I don't know. But it is crazy now that you can track shit and be like, we know it's in there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we know it's right that's in there. That's what I'm saying. I, I'm like, if, if I have, like, a re- if there's a reasonable belief, it's now been like almost two weeks. Oh, and this was recent. This was we- pretty oh, recent. Oh, I thought this was like a while ago. No. Okay. Um, Dude, I mean, and I have found, you ever, have you, have you like just like parked outside? You should do a little stake. I, I did a couple, a couple did nights. Did you see anybody walk in and out? I, no, not really. I mean, I, I went there like late at night after a show I did and I was just, I, I was so pissed off you after the show. You got donuts and coffee and you're just like, my fucking wife. Well, I what, just imagine you, can you do sitting it in my... your Volvo, something <laughs> in the way. <laughs> Dude, I was, I was fucking like feeling so pissed off because what you can do with AirPods because I, I, they were the maxes. Yeah, you can ping them, and the maxes make like the loudest noise I've ever. Like if you're in top floor of a house, you can hear them all the way down in the basement. Yeah. So I just kept pinging them like at three, four in the morning, and just trying to get like them annoyed. Yeah. Um, and also just to let them know, like I know they're there. Like I, you didn't just steal it from somebody that doesn't know what's going on, and nothing ever happened. But I've really, I've parking there a couple times i've had like violent thoughts to be like i'm gonna fucking crowbar the door and break in and knife everybody in the house <laughs> not gonna do that but that's maybe why edit I... that out of the pod uh <laughs> yeah in my you're right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. just to make sure that was, you know, it, it was hyperbole elliot I, yeah. would like to unalive them yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, in minecraft I, unalive them in minecraft and he know. wants to jump on their server oh, and dude, grief I, i'm gonna grief their house in real life <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can you swat them um oh yeah, potentially but i'm not gonna do that now that now that we have this on rec- on record well dude you can not. you can delete the i mean yeah if you need to swat somebody delete this part of the podcast i will say that uh jake that runs whiteys yeah he said i don't have a fucking job i'll sit out there i'll go back to prison so <laughs> yeah, you, you have, have someone willing I, to help yeah. you the thing is dude you i bring this up with anybody and they're like Fuck it, let's just go in there and beat the fuck out of them. Yeah. And like that's been what's been Yeah, but you have a, such a disadvantage. You're going I know, into I'm an not environment actually... you don't know what they have. Yeah. You guys are just try to steal headphones and you get blown away. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a guy with a twelve gauge just I think right. though it's a nicer area. Like it's right We're by good. South High School. Right. Yeah, but they still might have a gun. True. You I mean know, like, not... everybody has yes. guns, you know. It doesn't matter how nice. Lots of people have guns. We are we're at I'd time say, is what Neil said. Okay, but take a ahead. day off. Just park out there all day. I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. really, like you have to see like who it is. Yeah, actually get to see their face at least, and then yeah. you could judge like, oh, could I take this fucking guy? Right. Because yeah, if it's just like a punk, if it's just like a punk kid who lives with his parents, I that's the case because the house is like. Decent. Oh, dude. Okay. I was thinking we were dealing with like a dangerous criminal no, element here. It's you like, just like got like robbed by like a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think dude, it was a group fuck of his teens. Ass up. Yeah. yeah. Fuck his ass up. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking too. And yeah. I've, I, I've been kind of scrolling through Facebook marketplace and just being like, cause I, I've seen a couple things where I'm like, that could be mine. But, Damn dude. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they just were like, we want to play video games and listen to it. Yeah. Maybe they just stole it for their own and they're not yeah. even trying to sell it. Yeah. So it might still be in there. Yeah. Dude, it's time. It is time. Yeah. Get a shysty. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Right. Elliot pulling up in the shysty, <laughs> yeah, dude. dude. It's all, but your neck's all yeah. bunched up. Yeah. like skin is breaking through the front. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you can go on the light rail, hire a couple of those guys. They'll get that yeah, shit back. Yeah. yeah. You got foil? Let me yeah, get you some yeah. foil. Yeah. All right. Um, well, well, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. Thanks for letting me watch all these car crashes in your living room. Yeah, of course. Of you, course. Well, you rocked it out with the hardest rap is the hardest trap is in the 55014 area code. Have a blessed day. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet, sweet. Thanks, fellas. Thank yeah. you.